Boyd Warren is on his way up to offer our invocation. Good afternoon. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear God, our creator and sustainer of all things that is or ever will be, <clears throat> accept our thanks for this day and all of its blessings. We ask that you guide and direct our club, its leaders, and our actions. Grant that each of us may feel our responsibility to Rotary, to our community, to our country, and indeed to all the countries and people throughout the world that we are doing work in. We ask that you bless and protect the leaders of our country, the troops that place their lives on the line daily to protect our freedom. We ask a special blessing upon our guest speaker today, Dr. Pastides, who has displayed our motto of service above self during his leadership here at the university. And for these students, who have excelled in school and will be honored here today. Bless our fellowship today and bless this food for the nourishment of our bodies and us to thy service. Amen. Amen. Everybody's taking their seats. Kim Mitchell is on her way up to introduce our visiting, visiting Rotarians and guests. If uh, everybody would take a look at the cart buckets on your tables, we now have a QR code fixed to the cart bucket. Uh, so you can pick it up and pass it around in case anybody doesn't have change. You're certainly welcome to support uh, Alzheimer's research uh, by scanning the QR code. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. We have one visiting Rotarian today, Mr. James Smith. If he would please stand. He is visiting us from Lake Park. We have an abundance of guests in the audience today, so in order to keep uh, President Pastides on time, um, if you are a guest today, if you would just stand and we're going to collectively uh, welcome you as a group. On the side of the club, we welcome you today. Doug Cochran. He's seated. Doug, if you would please stand up. Doug has asked everybody to please bring books from home to support our free little library project. So, stole some Clifford books from my five year old this morning. Um, so, if you, if you brought books in, uh, please see Doug after the meeting and, and uh, help him load them in his car. That would be great. Did you start knowing that you My daughter. My daughter. She, does, so she doesn't. I waited until she left for school. <laughs> John Asman is going to do health and happiness for us here today. Thanks, Stephen, and I won't tell your daughter. Good afternoon. Looks like we have a good crowd, exciting meeting today. And I have, uh, uh, thanks for sharing a few uh, happiness notes with some folks here. Um, it's my understanding that Dr. Ryle's son was married, uh, was it Brevard this weekend? Grandson. Grandson, excuse me, excuse me. Grandson, you didn't give me that note, but it was. Yes, right. All right, so that's exciting. Uh, congratulations to you and to them. Uh, the Gamecock lacrosse team is a national champion. So that's our thing. Dr. Wayne Cannon shared with me that his grandson, Kyle Cannon, Graduated from Clemson, just listen to this man, this is amazing. In bioengineering, magna cum laude, he has a research grant from the Mayo Clinic in Baltimore for next year. And not to be outdone, Michael Kahn has shared with me that uh, this is your daughter, Dr. Jocelyn, uh, is ENT in um, pediatrics. She has uh, just won an ENT pediatric fellowship. Uh, she's at Austin Medical, and it's for the fellowship is for the year 2021. Yesterday was uh, Mother's Day. Is that news to anybody that's attending? <laughs> <laughs> right. 
is hopefully out of the doghouse now. Uh, and so I, I, I looked up, um, you know, how did Mother's Day get started? And uh, it turns out uh, it, it had been celebrated, not officially called Mother's Day, but it had been celebrated even back during uh, the early times around the Mediterranean. And only in America could we make it a holiday. And so uh, I started out in West Virginia, a lady by the name of Anna Jarvis, uh, really uh, wanted to care for mothers. And it turned out that she was the one that kept pushing and in, um, let's see, was it? 1914, President Woodrow Wilson signed a measure making that an official national holiday. And I thought it was interesting that Anna Jarvis, the lady that worked so hard to get it all started, she remained unmarried and childless for her life. So that's your Jeopardy question that will come up. But I don't think we're going to beat that guy anyhow. So, how does your but did your, your family celebrate Mother's Day the way last yesterday? It did. Okay. Ooh, that's not many hands going out. Yeah. Does your mother know? Uh, did, any, did you have any uh, family traditions, or maybe Southern traditions? Anybody wear a flower on their lapel or on their outfit yesterday? Oh, there we go. Typically a rose. White for White if your, if your mother has passed. Red if uh, she's still living. Um, if you didn't do that, I'm going to encourage you next year to put that in your, put that in your phone so that you'll remember it next year uh, to remember Mother's Day. Um, and one of the rules was the mom shouldn't cook on Mother's Day. Is that a rule? <laughs> Is any mother here? You ladies, yeah, did you cook? Good. No cooking on Mother's Day. Um, let's see. Did any mothers get a telephone call yesterday? You did? From a child that was out of town or away? Good, good. Um, speaking of telephone calls, when is the last time, I hope it was not a collect call, by the way. <laughs> I think with these phones, you know, it's kind of gotten away from us. But when is the last time you made a collect call? I want to see a show of hands. Can you remember making a collect call? You know what I'm talking about. Those people with no hair and gray hair the ones putting up their hands. Yeah, collect call. Wait, I thought about that for Mother's Day. You know, call and collect. Call and collect. But uh, that wouldn't happen. But when I was studying that, it turns out the most when they would measure who made collect calls and how many. I guess Joe Anderson from Bell South would ask him. But when they would measure how many collect calls were made, the day, in the, at least in the U.S., that was the highest number of collect calls made. It was not Mother's Day. Father's Day. Yeah. I'm sure Dad's going to pay the bill for me to tell, <laughs> to tell him hello. Okay. And um, real quick, has anybody ever had kind of a bad experience on Mother's Day? Your plans didn't go right? Okay, I'm going to confess one from about 25 years ago here in Columbia, a restaurant had reopened and everybody was excited about it. I called a week ahead and made reservations. We got out of church, this was out in the St. Andrews area, and all the family goes, and I said, I see the long line, but y'all go ahead up in front, we got um, reservations. I parked the car, I walked up there, and they said, no sir, we don't take reservations. I said, yeah, I talked to Sally Wednesday, and she made our reservations. She said, she quit Thursday. <laughs> well, wait a so we got my long way, we're sitting there, and then after we've been seated a few minutes, I was seated for 30 minutes. I mean, we hadn't received water, no attention. I'm looking around. I find somebody I think that's in charge. I went over and said, I said, you know, nobody's waiting our table. Uh, matter of fact, there's a lot of tables. And I said, can you help me with that? He says, well, I wish I could. But about 10 minutes ago, the chef and about four waiters quit. <laughs> we went back to Mom's house and had tuna fish sandwiches. And I still <laughs> That was my mother's thing <coughs> from hell, I guess I would call it hell. So she used to laugh about it. She's long since passed now. Well, in closing, let me, oh yeah, I have one more thing here. Um, oh, 
Did you hear the joke about the university president that announced his retirement but forgot to tell his wife? <laughs> gets together to give out scholarships. We fundraise year, year long for this, and um, this is this is the, probably the most fun meeting of the year, in my opinion. Not only because it marks just six weeks away before when I hand over the gavel to Louisa, but uh, but also uh, just because we have so many bright people in the room and so many people that have made a difference in their lives, um, and it uh, really represents the work of our scholarship committee, which has done a ton to make to make sure this day went off without a hitch. And with that, I would like to introduce Dr. Kay Shaw, who is the chair of our scholarship committee. Thank you, and thanks to the club's commitment and to the leadership of our board, Columbia Rotary will award two high school seniors with $20,000 scholarships and one senior with a $10,000 scholarship. These scholarship funds are paid directly to the college on a semester basis as long as the student maintains a B average or a 3.0 GPA. In addition, we added several requirements this year which will keep our winners more connected and involved with Rotary. Members of this year's scholarship committee, and I would ask you to stand please, Louisa Campbell, Bob Dickel, Rebecca Dunlopson, Catherine Kennedy, Dr. Leo Richardson, Alan Robertson, and myself. And please give them a hand. They have a <laughs> we did have the daunting task of choosing winners from very smart and talented high school seniors from Richland One Schools, then Lippin, Heathwood Hall, and the South Carolina Association of Independent Home Schools. And a special thank you to Ms. Trina Alfing, coordinator of school counseling services at Richland One, Christy Johnson from her staff. They were a help throughout this process, and we certainly appreciate your help. Now you're going to get to meet our winners. The, two, the recipients of the two $20,000 scholarships are Richard Brown from Drea High School and Clement Spardella, representing the South Carolina Association of Independent Home Schools. Richard is going to be introduced by his school counselor, Dominique Padgett, and Clement will be introduced by middle and high school director, Beth Martin. <coughs> the recipient of the $10,000 scholarship is Catherine Marion from Ben Lake. Catherine is going to be introduced by Brianna McLeod, Dean of Women at Ben Lake. And we're at, going to ask these folks to come forward, um, and we're going to start with Mr. Padgett. Mr. Padgett, if you'd come forward, uh, we pick up the microphone and begin your introductions. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dominique Padgett. I'm a school counselor at Drea High School in Richland One. And today I have the privilege of introducing our award winner, scholarship winner from Drea, Rashad Brown. Um, he's had a very positive impact at Drea High School through his academic work, through athletics, as well as his involvement in the community. Not only at Dreer, but because of his dedication and his hard work, he at also attends Hayward Career Center, and he was awarded the Student of the Year based upon his academic work and his hard work um, for Hayward Career Center, which he uh, is auto in auto mechanics, I should say, auto mechanics. So not only is he doing well in the actual classroom, taking advanced placement and honors classes, He's also doing great at the Career Center as well. Um, Richard, I've known for three, maybe three years, and he's always been a highly respectful and humble young man. Anything you ask him to do, he's been on our student council, he's done superintendent council, he's done many things throughout the school and in the community. And I know without a shadow of a doubt, after he leaves high school, he's going to continue his success. And today I introduce to each and every one of you, our scholarship winner from Drew High School, Rashad Brown. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rashad Brown, and as she said, I attend Drew High School. 
Next year, I will be attending Rose Holman Institute of Technology to study mechanical engineering. students. Cummins Fardella has been in homeschool his entire life and the rigorous and individualized learning environment has, has afforded him opportunities to take college classes, to do independent study with a USC professor, to serve his community and to pursue his hobbies and passions. And the result of this rich, rich learning environment that has been directed by his mom is an amazing young man. He's very bright, as evidenced by his grades and, and exceptional SAT scores. However, what impresses me, and I'm sure impressed the scholarship panel, is a well-spoken, kind, humble young man who loves to learn just for the sake of learning, and who displays incredible maturity and integrity. So I'm honored to present to you Clemens Bardella. and I serve as Dean of Women at Ben Lippin School and also 7th grade English teacher, which is how I met this next recipient. Um, I have the tremendous privilege of speaking about one of my former students, Catherine Marion. I first met Catherine when she entered my 7th grade English classroom, or 6th grade, excuse me, and I taught her the following year in 7th grade as well. And from the start, she stood out to me. Her nose was almost always in a book. She was smart and capable, and best of all, she was headstrong and determined. This girl had spunk, and may I add, she still does. I'm a favorite kind of person. Um, even then, so many of her strongest qualities were already beginning to take shape, and over the past several years, I have seen the Lord develop those qualities within her. She serves her school, her church, her family, and her community well. Her teachers know her as diligent, mature, dependable, faithful to her work, and driven. Knowing these things, I trust she will approach her future plans with the greatest tenacity and accomplish everything she sets her mind to. The Rotary Club shows an amazing recipient. She is so very deserving of this scholarship, and we are so very proud of her. So, on behalf of Ben Lippin School, it's my proud honor to introduce one of this year's Rotary Scholarship recipients, Ms. Catherine Marion. Just thank y'all for your hard work and all that y'all give back to our community, and I look forward to coming back to see y'all shortly. Richard, if you would please introduce your mother and grandmother who are with us today. Sorry about that. I'd like to introduce my mother, Joyce Molly, and my grandmother, Sarah Smiley. Thank you. Golf Tournament in 1976. 
you may not even remember who was president that year. But I bet every one of you in this room can remember that special teacher. That special teacher who believed in you, who brought out the best in you, and encouraged you to succeed in the classroom. And what a difference that has made in your life. Today we have three students whose exemplary high school record has earned them the honor and distinction of being chosen as a Columbia Rotary Scholar. During the interviews, each one of these students readily identified that special teacher who inspired them and who made the difference in their academic career. With the help of Rotarian and Ritual One Superintendent, Dr. Craig Witherspoon, we would like to recognize and thank these teachers who made a difference with a plaque and a small check from Columbia Road. <coughs> Dr. Witherspoon, yeah. Richard Brown immediately named his English Two Honors teacher, Miss Amory Polovic. says his mom, Amy, deserves that honor. <laughs> and Catherine Marion wanted to thank and recognize her fourth grade teacher, Miss Debbie Young. scholarship committee members and congratulations again to Richard and Clement and Catherine. Uh, we're very proud of you. We hope you'll come back and visit us when you're on break. You're welcome anytime. Your parents uh, and, and uh, school friends are welcome here too. Um, Dr. Susan Elkins and Mason Hardy, of the chairman of our Rotary uh, International, International Foundation Committee, are here to uh, award a special presentation today. Thank you so much, President Stephen. Well, this truly is Education Day at the Rotary Club of Columbia, isn't it? And as we all know, we're thrilled that uh, we have our USC's beloved first couple with us today. <laughs> President Harris Pastides will be our speaker. And of course, he's joined by First Lady Patricia Moore Pastides. As you know, President Pastides is an honorary <laughs> member of our club, and he's been a Paul Harris Fellow for many years. And we'll talk more about him shortly as, as he's introduced. But at this time, Foundation Chair Mason Hardy will join me as we also recognize our wonderful First Lady. Noted teacher, author of three books, and public health professional, who has made a tremendous impact during her 11 years as First Lady. We certainly didn't want her to retire without joining President Pastides as a Paul Harris Fellow. So Patricia. We are pleased to present you with the Paul Harris Fellow Award in honor of your exemplary service to our community, our state, and beyond. Thank you for your service above self as our First Lady. our speaker, who certainly needs no introduction to this group. However, of course, we want to recognize the amazing accomplishments and numerous contributions of President Pastides during his 11 years as the 28th President of the University of South Carolina. Now, we all know that if this introduction included everything that should be said about President Pastides and our wonderful First Lady, there wouldn't be any time left for him to speak at all. So you'll find the introduction on your tables, 
And I'll share only one fun fact before turning the microphone over to him. And that one fun fact is one amazing number. It's his favorite number after our last of 13 commencements over the past 10 days. And that number is 117,662. 117,662. Anybody got an idea of what that number might be? Anybody? No, you, you, you can't, you don't count if you've been to commencement and heard this. <laughs> I bet we've got some guesses out there, some people waving their hands. And I'll bet, yeah, we got lots of people guessing. That's the number of degrees he's conferred at 181 commencements during his 11 years as president of the University of South Carolina. How about a big round of applause for that? Before he takes the microphone, I'll tell you, take, I'll take his words, he's now playing the Powerball with his new favorite guy. <laughs> thank, thank you, uh, Dr. Elkins. Thank you, uh, President Creek. Uh, by the way, Patricia, that is a wonderful honor. It comes with a $1,000 membership due, though. So <laughs> And uh, John, I don't know where you went, but uh, you got that joke wrong. It's not about the president who forgot to tell his wife. It's about the first lady who tendered the president's recognition, resignation and forgot to tell him. <laughs> and uh, thank you, everybody. I feel like I'm at a Thanksgiving dinner because you are my family. I, I pledge to be more than an honorary member uh, once we uh, uh, move on, in fact, and be a contributing member. I love the Rotary just about as much as I love my university. That's how much I think about all, uh, all you do, not only for education, by the way, but also for a world of harmony and world friendship with all the uh, international rotary uh, uh, scholarships that you give. And, and Catherine, good choice. Look forward to uh, seeing you next year. I really want to do two things here. One is to answer the oft-asked question, you know, why now? Why are you moving on? And then uh, a little bit about the second most common question, what do you plan on doing? And uh, Susan said it right, you know, 181 commencements, 117, 662. Patricia and I feel, is it okay to say satisfied? It's, just, it's, not a, it's not a word that people use a great deal today. Everyone wants more, needs more, more of everything. You know, and we feel like we've got, we're getting up from a wonderful light meal where we're satisfied. Not Thanksgiving dinner, but how about a, a seafood meal? Not fried seafood. <laughs> how about a lightly grilled tilapia with green beans and maybe a starch and no chocolate cake afterwards? You know, you know you're going to eat again, you, you know, and you want to eat again, but it doesn't have to be right now. And, and let me tell you why. First of all, they, uh, you know, they did a 10-year book about our accomplishments, and it's our 11th year, and I'm thinking, do you think they're going to do a 12-year book? No, I don't think so. Uh, they had our portrait done by John Siebel's Walker. Uh, it's a beautiful portrait. I said, I think they're giving us a signal here. <laughs> Portraits are done upon retirement. They tried to tell us no, but I looked up at the portrait and said, I'm satisfied. And then we built a retirement house as well that, uh, that, you know, we're paying the mortgage, paying the electricity, paying the water bill, paying the landscaper, and we're there about, you know, like 10 days a year. That didn't feel right, and uh, so we thought it was time. But in terms of being satisfied, let me mention a few things to you and see if you would agree with me that uh, it was a good time to move on. First of all, the tremendous physical growth around the campus and the whole city. You've all seen the new Darla Moore School of Business, not so new anymore. That wasn't there. And by the way, next time you're there, walk into the courtyard and see the Leonardo Nearman stainless steel sculpture. Thank you, Dot Ryle, for that one. The Burke Story uh, uh, Engineering Center on the corner of Assem Assembly and Blossom. The new College of Social Work in the former Armory on, Armory on campus called Hamilton. How about the new Alumni Center? You know, isn't that a magnificent thing? A new honors residence hall 
a new student health center, I always say the most important thing we did in 11 years is build a new student health center. Some of you haven't seen it because it's right on the core of campus. A new medical school in Greenville, 650 Lincoln with those beautiful um, uh, apartments. Foundation Square in front of the Colonial Life Arena, the 1801 Grill, by the way. Great renovations, the Hollings uh, addition to the Thomas Cooper Library, Booker T. Washington renovation, the new law school. Let me start with the old law school that is going to be America's greatest chemistry building when we're done with it and open that in the fall of 2020. Uh, and how about the new law school with that beautiful Dale Chihuly chandelier in the lobby? Walk over there at night sometime and tell me if that's not one of the most breathtaking things uh, you've ever seen. Complete renovations of the women's quad, of Patterson, of Pettigrew, athletics. None of these were here 11 years ago. Founders Park. You remember the old, the old uh, farmer's market? It was a pretty fun place to tailgate if you had lots of beer and friends around. But that, that Founders Park, I think, is second to none in terms of a pre-game experience. The Athletic Village is new, including the Rice and the Doty. We're going to give, I'm going to help, but please don't tweet this in case it's a surprise, Andy Shane. Doty Anderson's going to receive the order of the Palmetto there at 3 p.m. Uh, today at the Doty. Wheeler Beach, new softball stadium, new tennis center, new track and field facility, stone stadium soccer uh, facilities upgraded, new basketball practice facility, the new, um, the new um, football operations center, if you haven't seen that, new outdoor practice field, new indoor practice facility named for the Spurriers. Moving away from capital projects, um, student growth, the largest and most talented freshman class in the history of the university, 6,000 students, one out of every two South Carolinians, one out of every two attends the University of South Carolina, not only in Columbia, but when you look at our eight campuses all together. But in order to get 6,000 students, it's not like you got 6,000 applicants. We had 31,000 applicants from around the world for those, uh, for those uh, positions in the freshman class. That's up 70% since 2008. And as I said, over 117,000 graduates. New programs for research experience, for uh, leadership development. Palmetto College, the most affordable way to get a college degree in South Carolina today is to start at one of our two-year facilities all around the state and, to, and do your last two years online. Not as low as I would like it, but we're going to ask the General Assembly for more support to bring that cost down. They've had 1,234 degree recipients already and over 3,000 students enrolled in Palmetto College. I could, I could keep going on relative to uh, uh, faculty development, but the number one ranking of the Honors College, the continued number one ranking in international business. We are now, we also have a brand new top ranking you might not know about sports science, except it's number one in the world, not only in the USA. Um, so we've, increased, we've increased graduation rates. Ladies and gentlemen, the quickest way to take on debt when we talk to our new three student, uh, our student scholarship recipients is not to get your degree in four years or less. And so we've increased the four-year graduation rate to the point where it's nearly 80% now. And it's the same for African Americans as for white students. And uh, the way we do that, let me tell you, is uh, by technology. We identify students at risk, we call them in, we say, son, it's usually a boy, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, it won't be you. I don't know about these other guys here. <laughs> son, you got a C in your, in, your, uh, you know, in your gateway math course. You don't really want another C, do you? No, no, no sir. Well, we made an appointment for you at the Student Success Center. You can do math. We wouldn't have invited you into the freshman class if we thought you were going to get a C or a D or an F. So come and see us. So we've increased our uh, graduation rates. We have far lower student debt than the average South Carolina graduate and far less than the average American college graduate. It's still too much. 
If you want to know how, how much that is, by the way, it's between $25,000 and $30,000 a year. That's the average student debt of an American college student today. It should be zero, of course. So, And uh, I'm also so happy of the work we've done relative to inclusion and diversity. We had the commemoration of our 50th anniversary of desegregation. It took too late, of, uh, of course. Did you know that South Carolina College after the Civil War was open to black and white Americans, South Carolinians, to freed slaves, the only Southeastern University to be open to freed slaves as well as white students. Of course, it was shut down seven years later, reopened as a white male only institution. We had 11 lawyers, 11 African American lawyers in the original law school in the years between 1867 and 1877 at that time. Uh, we graduate more African Americans than all but 3% of colleges in the United States of America. And we enroll more South Carolinians and more underrepresented minority students than any other college uh, in the state. I was so proud, I don't know if there's anybody here representing Allen University, but to be awarded the Richard uh, Allen Award for Diversity and Inclusion by a neighboring uh, college of ours, a friend, uh, was a great honor. We concluded a $1 billion campaign, and some of you, of course, are donors, called Carolina's Promise. We just received another $18 million from the estate of Bob McNair, our dear friend and uh, deceased Houston Texan uh, owner, uh, to continue that, that uh, amazing McNair Scholars Program. And just last April 10th, uh, over 18 hours and one minute, we collected over $4 million from 6,576 donors. Why 18 hours and one minute? 1801, you got it. In athletics, four national championships, seven individual national championships, 10 SEC championships, and lacrosse didn't even count because lacrosse is a club sport but we're still playing in the NCAAs for men and women's golf and for uh, women's tennis. Um, and so, you know, I, I, so I, wa I wanted to basically tell you that, you know, that, that's, a good, that's a good decade of, of achievement and accomplishment. And, and, and friends, for a CEO to exit public life after 11 years and still feel like they're on top, to go out with a salute, kick your heels, thank you, not be dragged down, not be carried off is really a wonderful, yeah, carried off, that's the way they're, they're usually carried off. Uh, uh, or with, a, or with it, you know, it's either a stretcher or handcuffs these days. <laughs> now, I, I, I'm, I'm still sensitive, Patricia's got my phone there, but I have a, a, a countdown, a countdown timer. And I still got a couple, of, I shouldn't have said that, I still have a couple of more months they could get me, you know, one way or another, but I hope not. And, uh, and so, uh, and by the way, everything that we've done, let me tell you that our reward has been greater to us than what we've given to others. Nobody, more than Patricia and I, could feel uh, grateful, could feel uh, cherished for the work we did. We had more backs on the uh, pats on the back, more way to go, more selfies, more high fives. Uh, no one deserves that kind of uh, gratitude. And if I allow myself, I'll get sentimental here. I've got like, I've been walking around with five handkerchiefs in my pocket, you know. When one gets uh, all wet, I just pull out another one. Uh, we marched last week and right before the first major commencement, um, before I was about to walk out, look, I've done it a lot before, I get nervous every time. You know, you're walking into the arena, there's 16,000 people there, you've got to be, you know, strong and articulate and uh, uh, carry the whole event and, and, uh, and they say, well, what? don't go out just yet. And I said, i got to go out. Go right to the podium and say, um, welcome everybody uh, to one of the uh, crowning achievements of your career at the... They said, no, don't go out yet. I said, i got to go out. They said, look up at the video board. And they played uh, a seven-minute video tribute to us by some of our fa favorite students that we've had over the years, both famous and not famous, Marcus and Miranda Lattimore, but also Martha Childress, who, you know, was the unfortunate victim of a stray bullet and five points and on and on. 
And so we went through five handkerchiefs right away. I had, not, <laughs> I had not one handkerchief left for the rest of the ceremony. And I'll close with this because I think they have a little video mm -hmm. to show. And I know we're going to get out at 1.30. One, and, um, and, that, and that is that um, it was the hardest commencement speech I'd ever written. Let me tell you, it's all because I picked the theme of moving on. And it's a lot easier giving advice to other people than it is listening to it yourself. So I was, you know, writing it and crying and editing it and crying. And I said, you know, I'm going to have trouble because I thought by practicing it enough, you'd stop, like, crying because, you know, because it, now it's just a speech. It's not a, I couldn't stop crying, tearing up at the end. Uh, and I told them that moving on is hard for them, it's who, moving on is hard for Patricia and me after 11 years. How does one move on from something they love? How does one move on from their home? And I told them that I looked for what psychologists and singers and poets had said about moving on, but most of it is about moving on from a divorce or a broken romance, it didn't apply. But I told them I love the lyrics of this one country song that said, you broke my heart, so I ripped up your picture. <laughs> and, and, then, and then I told them what Robert Frost said at, at the age of 92. He said, I could sum up everything I've learned in life in three words. It goes on. And so I said, class of 2019, it goes on. But let's do as uh, Winnie the Pooh said. Yeah, big important college president quoting Winnie the Pooh. I did that. <laughs> because Churchill didn't apply and Kennedy didn't apply Winnie the Pooh. He, he said, let's not cry because it's over. Let's smile because we had it. And then finally I said, let's uh, look through that open window as we step out of an open window, window, look back. And I said, the more joy we feel for what we've had, the happier we'll be in moving on. So I don't know if they got it or not, uh, but I think that's the way I'm going to feel, rather than lament about moving out of one of the most beautiful president's houses in the country, you know, rather than not having the really big office with the really wonderful art that belongs to the McKissick. We're going to look back and feel really, really happy for what we had. Where we're going, we're going to have uh, an apartment here in Columbia. We're putting in the final finishing touches on where that would be. So we'll be good rotary participants here. We're going to have a primary home at Folly Beach, where if you even think about wearing a tie, <laughs> not going to have it. <laughs> you know, my, my flip-flop collection is sorry right now, but I'm, I'm going to Target buy flip-flops in many, in many colors, as long as they're garnet and black. <laughs> and uh, give some ties to uh, Interim President Brendan Kelly, because I have so many garnet ties. He probably has a lot of green ones. He's going to need garnet ties uh, and move on. But finally, uh, it really was all about the students. I am so, like Superintendent Witherspoon, like the teachers here, I am so passionate about young people today. And let me end with this. If you think our country's in bad shape because of young people, you are absolutely wrong. They are inquisitive. They are innovative. They are outspoken. They're concerned about the environment, about the lack of civility in the public square. They are concerned about art and creativity. Of course, they're concerned about their own lives as well. They're tolerant, inclusive, embracing, and I guarantee you our world will be a better place when they take over. And so, uh, so thank you to uh, you, uh, all of our friends uh, at the Rotary, for also being such uh, stalwart supporter, supporters of the two of us, of the, birth, uh, the best First Lady in the land, who would wind me up in the morning and uh, open the door, show me the way to where I was going, uh, give me a little pat and say, get going. <laughs> and I'll see you tonight. And uh, it's really, a, it really, uh, it took that and more. So, um, do you want to, do you want to play the video? Would that be, is that what we're going to do? So this is emblematic of my time with the students. My last video for students. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Great. Welcome to the mini conversation. Tell us about yourself. 
So my name is Aiden Baker. I'm a freshman and a business major from Zionsville, Indiana. What's your favorite thing about our university? Oh my goodness, the campus is so gorgeous and there's just so many spots. What's your favorite thing? Well, the freshman, of course. <laughs> about yourself. Um, my name is Amy Smith. I'm a sophomore nursing major from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, what's your favorite thing about the university? My favorite thing is probably how much spirit everybody has on campus at our athletic events. When you're walking on campus, you just see people sporting their USC gear. And everybody really loves being a Gamecock, and that's probably one of my favorite things. Absolutely. <laughs> Dr. Pastis, what's your favorite thing about USC? Oh, it has to be the sophomores. <laughs> Tell us about yourself. All right, well, my name is, oh, my name is Jack Taylor. I'm a junior uh, broadcast journalism major from Charlotte, North Carolina. Jack, what's your favorite thing about our university? Just the community about it. It's such a big campus, yeah. but it kind of makes it small when you do things like this. Fantastic. What about you, sir? What's your favorite thing? Well, you know, I've been thinking about this question. I get it asked a lot, and uh, it's got to be the juniors. <laughs> You must be our senior. I am. Nice to meet you. Yes, awesome. Tell us about yourself. Well, my name is Ellen. I'm a senior public health major for Rock Hill, South Carolina. What is your favorite thing about our university? I just love walking around campus and just seeing the beauty of it and how historic it is and the azalea bushes, all the landscaping. I just think it's such a gorgeous campus. Absolutely. What's your favorite part about this? What do you know? Of course, the seniors. Because I'm a senior too. We're all graduating together in May, and I'm uh, sentimental about that. But how can you not love the seniors at the University of South Carolina? <laughs> <laughs> so you've got a visitor, a visiting student, or a family member. What's the thing you're not going to let them leave without going to? I really like the clapping circle. I brought my mom, sister, and her, my sister's fiance over, and I told them about it, and they didn't believe me. It's so awesome. <laughs> Why wouldn't they believe you? It's a clapping circle. I'm trying to get them to come during the fall, I'm trying to get them to a football game. Whenever they, you know, are there from the beginning, 2001 yes. Sandstorm, they, they get hyped. They don't even they're in for the game guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'd say my favorite place on campus just has to be the horseshoe. It's absolutely beautiful, of course, we all know that, but then also there's just so much history surrounding it, and I love sharing that with people because it's kind of cool to know where we came from. And you may not know this, but when you all come back on a weekend evening, you hang around right in front of the president's house. <laughs> and I'm like, can't they go to sleep, please? <laughs> find you listening to if I saw you with your earbuds in. Post Malone. <laughs> okay, tell me who that is again. Post Malone. Yeah. He, he's like a he's like a rapper. Oh okay. <laughs> Was he part of the Moody Blues in the old <laughs> You know nothing. It stands for long playing. 33 and a third revolutions per minute. Yes.
president cannot be private. You know, you want to drive something that's recognizable so you can be more apparent to the world, especially to the students. You have been the center of my experience here, and what a ride it has been being your president. I can't thank all of you enough. We will have graduated over 117,000 students during my presidency, and that, that is what I'm most proud of. One of the very, very tough things I've done is had to decide how to pick the four of you <laughs> from all of the amazing and outstanding video applications that came in. You all were very, very good, but so were the others. And so it was so hard. I think it's good if I take all of them for a ride. What do you think? Absolutely. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> Can't put them all in Mini Cooper, though. <laughs> you want to try? <laughs> no. <laughs> Books are for sale outside in the uh, in the lobby area there, so please stop by before Probably you get. Let's go to scholarships. By the way. <laughs> Have a great week. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.